Hey, Emeril Lagasse here. You might think they know me here, but actually they do. Because in searching for the best, today we found the best in Panini World. Do you know what Panini is? Well, I'm going to take you inside via Quadrano, and I'm going to teach you, make you understand just what Panini is. Come on with me inside. Well, here I am. And there they are. Hey, hey Paolo. How are you? Benvenuto via Quadrano. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Hey, Casey, how you doing? Great, thank you. So uh, I've been telling the folks that uh, I'm here because of the uh, best panini. So hey, if you guys are right uh, ready, take me back. Yeah, I want to see them. All right. So, Paolo, what is a panini? Pane is a loaf of bread. Panino is a small loaf of bread. That's what it is. Small panino sandwich. Is and you put inside whatever your uh, Well, it could be meats, it could be cheese, it could be anything you like. A Florence Fabricant of the New York Times said that this is the best panini in New York City. Well, what makes the best panini? Ingredients? The, yeah, I would say, actually, if we didn't have a glorious name like the Quadrono, I would have called it ingredients. What is the top three? Paninis. Most paninis are made with hams. So we have the uh, regular uh, cooked ham. That's the Praga. Praga. Which is the smoked ham, the porchetta, the Roman specialty. Prosciutto, the speck, the cotto, pancetta, mm. salame, Genoa, Ungherese. It could be maybe tuna fish or it could be like artichokes. Or... Those, we like to put them on the tartine, on the open face tartine. Okay, Bye. so basically, there's two breads. The francesino and the ciabatta. They both slightly undercooked, so we give the finishing touch while we make it. This is the ciabatta. That right. means slippers, because it looks like slippers, the house And I slippers. see he's got the griddle there. Yes. You have to toast it. Okay. Both of them. Brie cheese. Brie cheese, see? Very nice. Okay. We have the speck sliced Slice here. very thin. Very thin. And that's what contributes to the goodness of the panino, is the freshness. Okay. There is nothing like slicing the, the hams on the moment. It all contributes to make something taste great. This is the pate, our okay. own pate. It has a touch of Porto wine, we mm -hmm. do, because it gives a little flavor, you know. Part of the fun thing of Emerald Live is to find these little jewels. Special places like this place here, there's a lot of attention to detail. The spread, the olive oil the bread, how it was baked, the quality of the ingredients. They don't have five pounds of this stuff sliced up, stacked up. The sandwich is ordered, the meat gets cut, the cheese gets sliced, the olive oil gets drizzled, made to order. Oh, here, this is the panini oh, we have oh, been done man. before. The one. Look at this, now yeah. it's time. This is the one. Mm. Eh? Oh. What do you think? So delicious. This is the Montanara. This is fresh asparagus and taleggio cheese. This, believe it or not, in Italy they call it Americano because of the corn we use, you know, right. which is a very American ingredient. This is the ciabatta, the rustic bread with the prosciutto sandania. Isn't this great or what? I think I'm, today I'm going to do a whole show on this. Why don't you come back to the studio with me? Hey, thank we'll you. Have a toast. Uh, my well, pleasure. Let's, let's get Casey. Grazie. On the way out. Casey. Ah. Great show for you, I guarantee you that. Unbelievable. Quite warm outside, isn't it? <laughs> Herman Lagasse here. You know, I get really excited when I find special, and I mean special places to eat, because they really inspire you, certainly inspire me. Today, I thought I would show you how to make some pretty kicked up sandwiches, and some sandwiches of my own, like an eggplant and roasted red pepper panini. How does that sound to you guys, huh? And then a little different sandwich, a little New Orleans-style, Pan Perdue. Do you know what that is? 
Just wait. Don't even think about touching that dial. Got some special friends here. Get ready, because it's Kicked Up Sandwiches right here on Emerald Live. Here. And we're kicking up sandwiches to new levels tonight. But first, give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. How you guys doing? So you think about sandwiches, you know, and all those classics, you know, especially here in New York, those great deli sandwiches, you know, whopping big, meatballs, and little poor boy here, little roast beef sandwich, grinders, hoagies. Keeps going on and on and on. We're going in a whole different direction tonight. Something uh, that I'm really excited about. First of all, I want to uh, introduce uh, my good friends Paolo and also Casey. Uh, and uh, these guys who you saw earlier, hopefully you didn't uh, do that, have a super place uh, in Midtown here on the Upper East Side called... Via Quadrano. Via Quadrano. And uh, you all right? Doc, I didn't, scare you. I didn't scare you with that word or anything, huh? Just a little. <laughs> and basically, um, wonderful little, tiny little place with uh, great coffee, espresso, cappuccino, et cetera, a little bar. And, and uh, what they're doing are doing these panini sandwiches, these sandwiches that are just really so delicious. And there are reasons why. And that's why exactly we're doing it on Emerald Live as we're uh, beginning a whole, new, uh, a whole new season. So... I want to ask you guys, I know that um, you guys have got some really awesome press, uh, and deservingly so. Uh, Florence Fabrican here, the New York Times, said it was by far the best panini in New York. And uh, I know the reason why of that, of course, and uh, I think we're all on the same page with ingredients. And you even said something that uh, ingredients. You see, I've been trying to tell people for a long time that in order to have great cuisine, you just got to have great ingredients. It's not, like, expensive. It's not... Uh, rocket science. It's just that you've got to uh, have a little passion, a little care, and a little time. And uh, I think one of the biggest things that um, you guys had talked about, first of all, was about the bread that you're using. Uh, this is uh, the slipper bread, ciabatta. Yeah, ciabatta. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, what a lot of the paninis are made out of. It's very, very light. And, um, but as Paolo and Casey were telling me that the formula of, of this bread that it's made because of the process that it has to go through, which we're going to show you in a few minutes, uh, whether it's either in a this type of toaster griddle or in a little toaster oven like this, it's undercooked, and it's undercooked for a reason, so that when they finish this application, uh, then the sandwich is perfect. Um, this is the other type of bread uh, that you use. Francesino. 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 Little French. Little French. And that's exactly what it is, which they cut... And uh, when I had that sandwich the other day there, it was just, like, amazing. And I keep going back, wanting more and more and more. That's the way that it should be. Thank you. And then a lot of your open face type sandwiches, the asparagus, and uh, I had uh, the artichoke, I had tuna. Uh, this is actually basically a, a pullman. Yes. But a, a mini pullman. But the name for this? We call it pancare, also from the French. Okay. And uh, we don't, they don't take the crust off. It's, you can see... The color of this is very, very rich bread, very golden. But you could use other breads that you like. I come back to ingredients because the bread, very, very, very important. But then the ingredients. As I said right on the top of the show, the interesting thing about these places, particularly the love of Italian food, is that there's not five pounds of this stuff sliced up, wrapped up in some sort of uh, paper, uh, in some cooler with, uh, you know, a bunch of other meats. It's when the order is placed, the sandwich is ordered, the meat is, is, is cut. And I want to go over a few of these specialty ingredients that I appreciate you guys coming by. I love this stuff. I don't know where you found it, but I love it. Tirol. It's called Speck. It's from Tirol. It's a region between uh, Italy and uh, Austria, up in the Alps. Mm -hmm. They make the best Speck. Well, I'll tell you, this is, uh, 
really, really delicious, and we're going to definitely do something with that. Uh, this is a bruschetta that you use. Bresaola, that's the Italian. Also, this is another border, the Italian and the Swiss, also in the Alps. Valtellina is the Italian side. The um, Swiss, they have uh, the square shape, uh, Bresaola, uh, mm -hmm. Budnaflaisch, as they call it. Coppa. Coppa. Love this. A yes. couple of hunks of this and some beans would be real good, you know what I mean? <laughs> but we're on sandwiches today, so we're going we're gonna to take it slow. I'm very to interested with this. Praga. Yeah, Praga is the capital of uh, the Czech Republic. Yes. Uh, in Italian, we call it Praga. It's Prague in, in English. And they smoke the ham in a hundreds of year tradition. So mm -hmm. we take from them because they make the best uh, smoked ham. Great bread. Great meats, mostly salamis, as you said. And then some cheeses, a little bit yes. accent. Yes. Now, there are some other ones that uh, also are used. Uh, the mortadella, different salamis, bologna, uh, pancetta that we have here. This I found really interesting. When you, when you guys made the sandwich mm -hmm. and you added this, your pate that pate. you have on this thing. Yes. I mean, I had it with it and then I had it without it. Unbelievable. It's, it's little simple accents like this. How about this olive oil? I'm, I'm always amazed. I, you know, uh, like the, uh, it's a region called Umbria, very little known, near the Tuscan region. What the Tuscans are famous for the best uh, wines, for the Chiantis. The Umbria claim they have the best uh, extra virgin olive oil. I'll tell you this, this is like, I like to say it's the Dom Perignon of the olive oils. Well, you know, while we're on that, I, I like that you said that because I don't think people quite understand and we've done a lot of shows about olive oil and uh, mostly about taste. But beside taste, another good thing is about color because of the pressing of it. Yeah. And I'm going to show you this olive oil right here that Paolo and Casey, do you see how green that is? Do you see that at home? See how green that is? I'm going to show you one. I'm not going to tell you where this is from. But I'm going to just show you the difference. This is another olive oil. We won't go there. <laughs> this is another olive oil. That's very, very important, you know, because people, sometimes you see the difference in color, though. Look at how green this is. When you, when you just smell that and taste that, that's the kind of oil, just a little drizzle. That's just a little of that for a salad or a little drizzle on some bread. Now, what kind of sandwich you want to start with? Should we do something with the speck? Sure. Uh, sure. You want to do that? All right. The interesting thing, I'll tell you what I did. We uh, got back from your shop, and uh, everybody that was there, we were not only just quite amazed uh, with the philosophy, but we said, you know, we got to kick it up a notch. <laughs> so you guys cost me like, oh yeah, you guys cost me like a lot of money because I had to go buy like a slicer. <laughs> Like a new toaster, you know, this thing, I don't even know how to turn it on, but we're going to figure it out because you guys are here. So I just wanted to let you know that, you, you know, you, uh, you really, really did it for me. Very thin. Good, yes. Very thin to spec. Yes. Is this too thick? I believe so. Yep. Hey. Sorry. You don't have to be sorry. I'm doing your sandwich. Okay. If it was mine, I wouldn't even slice it. <laughs> So nice, few thin slices like that? Yes. And what bread will you, uh, we want to use for the first one? Well, Just to know, get one on, what you want to use? I prefer the ciabatta, to be honest. You do? Okay. Some people like the francesino better. Case, what bread would you use? Ciabatta is good. That's what we're using. This stuff is amazing. You know, I decided after the show, I'm just taking this home and I'm going to sleep with it tonight in my <laughs> I'm not messing around with it anymore, you know? <laughs> All right, so now, would you use this end or would you cut the end off, Case? We cut the end off. End. About that much? Yeah. Yes. And then how big of a piece? Like here? No, smaller, smaller. Smaller here. Right. Your chef, what's his name? Bolivar. Nice guy. Yes. Cut this in the half best. like this. 
Okay? Yes. Now I'm coming here. I know the pate gets on there. Now you have to toss the breath toast first. Toast the breath first. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we want to. That's what we want to see. This side down. Yeah. All right. We're going to toast this bread right now. I know you had a wait. I've got a wait somewhere too, right here. <laughs> we're going to toast this bread when we come back. We're going to kick it up a notch. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back here, everybody. everybody my special guests Paolo and Casey from V Quadrano V Quadrano 74th Street 73rd 73rd Street I'm close I don't look at the signs I follow my nose if you uh, just join us we're doing a wonderful type of sandwich called panini um, and these guys do it best, and I have ciabatta being toasted, as well as the... Francesino. And now, once that gets warm, we're going to make one, as you directed me. We're going to take the first thing. Let's toast this. I thought what I'd do is do two types of breads. Okay? Great. Yes. So we've got them toasted now. Yes. You can really smell it. It's wonderful, too. Then, next thing we're going to do is the pate. Yeah. And uh, this is a little homemade pate, soft, with uh, duck liver, port wine. Yes. I see a little truffle in there. Can't fool me. <laughs> am, I, am I putting too much? Don't give up on my recipe. I won't. I'm not. <laughs> my lips I'm are sealed. Sure I can't wait to eat one of these things. <laughs> I didn't want to leave. Then you brought out that American one with the arugula and the mozzarella yes, and the yes, tomatoes. Yes. Americano. Oh, yeah, we make one of those. It's called Americano. Oh, all right. Now, you instructed me to do the brie cheese. Yes. I'm going to do the brie right over here. Thin. You know, one of the things that Paolo and Casey and I were talking about while we were at a commercial was how important it is of cutting this or slicing the meats to order. There's a reason for that, because you're not losing any of that aromatic, whatever it is. You're not losing the wonderful flavors. Same thing like a truffle. I mean, you wouldn't slice a truffle ahead of time unless you're gonna you're ready to use it or you would lose the whole pungency one or two case one one yeah. now I'm there one on each side one each side yes okay now we're gonna put it in the toaster <clears throat> oh yeah <laughs> oh wait you now you know why I invited him back to the show I didn't want to leave there. All right, we're going to put it in there. You could do this could be like new dorm food. A little toaster. All right, so we got that in there. Now, what I was saying about the cheeses, the meats, the bread, everything just cut to order so you don't lose. I mean, it'd be the same thing if you were to go and chop lettuce today for tomorrow. How would the lettuce be tomorrow, you know? If you were to uh, like the truffle. So everything is cooked to order so that you can really contain as much. Doesn't make it any harder, but it sure makes it more delicious. I'll tell you that. 
So we're going to let that toast in there. And then it's, uh, then it's the speck. Speck on top. On and top. Two covers. And it's ready to serve. It's ready to serve. Okay. All right. These ladies, I'm going to make believers. I, I promise. <laughs> why it's done. Now, I've got some more ciabatta being toasted there. Actually, let's do a little more, too. And um, what would the, what would you think the, uh, the next one that we should make? Americano. 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 Which is vegetarian crazy. So I have mozzarella. mozzarella. I have tomatoes. You had tomatoes, yes. I noticed when I was uh, at the shop, you had arugula. Arugula, corn. You also had some red, you had some red onion. Corn. We don't corn. put the onion in there because a lot of people, they don't eat onions. Okay. Corn. So corn. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I don't know if you hear this back there, <laughs> but I need some corn. <laughs> <laughs> the corn escaped me. <laughs> Call it all corn. <laughs> Doc, you, you'd love this place. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix you up right now. Great, uh, man. I'm, I'm going to fix you up right now as soon as I get the corn. All right. So I got this is toasted now. Americano. Tell me about it. Where First do I start? Slice mozzarella on top. Okay. On the other side too. On the other side is brie. On the other side is brie. Mm -hmm. Ah! Ah! Sneaking a few in there. <laughs> I love brie cheese too. Finally, cheeses now. Thank you. Okay, so we have some brie here. Just one case? One slice brie, yes. Okay. On the top of the brie, put some corn. Now this is fresh. Fresh corn is even better. Even better. Like your style. Thanks for the corn. Yeah. Your fans in Italy will not uh, believe you don't have corn in America. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got some corn on there. Put a little bit of salt and pepper on the mozzarella. Whew. And this salt right here. I love this. Seasoned. I'm so excited, Hilda. <laughs> and the sliced fresh tomato on the mozzarella. But I learned a little secret also, which I totally believe in, with your chef. See, nobody can really see him back there. But I know that he not only put the tomato, as soon as he put the tomato on it, he seasoned it. Yeah, yeah I don't know where you're getting your tomatoes, where we get ours, they don't come seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> okay? And I put the toast. Chop the arugula. Yeah. Doc, are you ready for this? I'm ready, baby. <laughs> not gonna believe this, Doc. Gee, you think I could get a big enough knife? <laughs> and first, we need to put both in the toast. Let the cheese melt a little bit you got before, before the arugula. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Now, I'm taking the first one out. Oh. I know. <laughs> I put this way here, Casey, right? Yes. On both sides or one side? One side. Okay. Tell me when. Now. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? This side over here. Now that all 50 million viewers are on you, ladies. <laughs> is that not spectacular? It is just unbelievable. Now, I'm going to do this one. With the ciabatta. And let the guys let me know how this is. We're going to put this one inside here because they want to melt the cheese a little bit and just slightly warm the tomato a little bit. Okay.
hey, maybe after the show, I could come down there and just work a little bit. <laughs> hey, if you ever get out of a job, you'll be my chef anytime. All right, I want to see how I did here. I'm going to see if your face lights up like mine did when I was at the shop. Thank you. Slightly warm. Not bad, huh, ladies? Simplicity. Simplicity. The freshness of the cheese, the meats, cut to order. When we come back, we're going to kick it up another notch. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lugasi here. Doc Gibbs and Cliff. And if you're just tuning in, Hot Sandwiches, they're the star of the show tonight. And uh, I got my friend Paolo and Casey, and I got a little, um, the Americano. Just warm right now on that side. Got the corn. On that side right there. Now, chop the rugula, right? Chop yes. the rugula. All right. Yes. Gonna have to cut the arugula on this side here. Now, a lot of you uh, have some of the paninis. Don't let them get cold. What's that? Show ain't over yet, ma'am. <laughs> All right, on the tomato? On the tomatoes. Okay. And the seasoning with some uh, olive oil? Yes. Olive oil right here, just a little drizzle? Yes. A little bit. Love that. Fresh peppers, a little Fresh bit pepper salt. And a little salt. Doc, you just wait, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm holding on. <laughs> Set. All right, here's what we're going to do. You know what, Doc? I ain't even cutting this for you. <laughs> Great. You got to, like, grab a hold of it. Thank you okay? very much. That's that fruit of love thing that I've been telling you about. Oh, man. Now, you go over there, 73rd Street. I mean, walk in. Oh, Madison. Mm. Unbelievable. I think you left something in the oven, too. Right? I do. It ain't burning, either. Good. I, I know. You see, I knew. I, here I am trying to kick him up a couple of notches, right? All right, we made a few paninis. We got some of those right there. But... On the commercial break, we had Casey come back, kick up a couple of them, a few notches right here. Look at this. Any vegetarians in the house? You're a vegetarian, ma'am? All right. How you doing? Nice. Basil. Basil. Yes. yes. Torn, whole? Torn. Pieces. My kind of guy. No stems. See this smell? Unbelievable. What Paolo was just saying, again, that belief, you know? The smell, so fresh. All right. Do them all basil or some arugula? Some arugula? You can put some arugula if you like. All either, basil. Either or. Usually either all or. Basil, okay. Yeah. And then olive oil. Olive oil, salt, and the peppers. Ladies, I don't know if you're ready for this, but. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I was too when I went there the other day, ma'am. <laughs> Fifteen sandwiches later, I was happy, happy, happy. <laughs> hey, Joe, can I can I uh, get you and Felicia here for a second? Or is that possible? Without uh, burning down over here, I'm going to leave this right there. It's very, very hot. Please make sure that that lady right there who's a vegetarian, that she gets some of those. Would you do that for me? Come on, don't be bashful. And I got some over here, too, because I got to start this next one. You like eggplant? I take some eggplant with some olive oil. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna skillet it. Just to kind of get it a little brown. Then I took also some red peppers, roasted them up, done that a bunch of times. Love that. See, the eggplant is like a sponge. Just absorbs that good olive oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the eggplant. Then what I thought I would do is take the bread. Take a little eggplant. A little bit of red pepper. I know Doc's over there. I can, I can hear him. <laughs> Little red pepper like that. Then what we're going to do, we're going to put them in the old toaster. Warm them up just a little bit. Now, if you wanted to put cheese, let's put cheese on one, shall we? Yeah. Mozzarella okay? Yeah. Me too. Thank you, ladies. To order, maybe just a little basil. Put that right on there, and we'll put that. We're going to salt and pepper it when it comes out. We're going to start toasting that. Then when you come back, I'm going to show you how to do an unbelievable savory pan Purdue. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Y'all having a good time so far? How's the paninis, all right? All right. Come on down here, you over there. Come on. Yeah, come on down. My friend, you had a question. You had a question for us uh, about uh, the difference between... I the speck? To, I wanted to know the difference between speck and prosciutto. And prosciutto. Paolo? Okay. Um, prosciutto is um, uh, cured, is the leg of a uh, pork, basically, and is cured from 12 months to 14 months. Uh, the most famous in Italy is uh, from Parma, but the, probably the oldest is uh, from San Daniele. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. See also, Apollo was saying, you can see how this really, really dried. And the prosciutto, as he said, from Palma, absolutely fantastic. But this is smoked. But this is smoked and dry or cured, if you will. Air cured is the prosciutto Palma. 
Both should be sliced very, very, very thin for the full. If you slice this thick, it, it really the texture and the whole flavor changes because it, it becomes uh, shreddy and it, it should, should be very, very, very thin. Now, in New Orleans, we have uh, pan perdu, basically, which is a, uh, almost like French toast, if you will. But then you can kick it up as we are these sandwiches. And how I'm going to do that is this. I've got French bread. I'm going to make a little batter here with a couple of eggs. Now for breakfast, basically we would flavor this how you wanted it. Orange, vanilla. But savory in this case, we're not. So we've got our batter right there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take some of those French breads. We're going to use a little Creole mustard. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> little Creole mustard. And then I'm going to use some salami, some mortadella. Oh, my man. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of fold it over. We put the Provolone. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we'll do two pieces of that too. Why not? <laughs> and then a little mortadella. And then a little pepper. How's that? Not too bad, huh? Fantastic. Let's see if we can do that. Now, there's a little mortadella music by Doc Gibbs. <laughs> now, here's the thing with Pan Purdue. Got it in there real nice. Take a little bit of butter in this sort of non-stick pan. Ah, we can put a little olive oil, too. And you add both like that, you get the flavor of the butter, but you increase the smoking point. The butter really doesn't have a lot of smoking point. Then you take this and dip it inside of this batter. Just let it kind of soak for a minute. And what we'll do now is we'll take it and we'll flip it over. That French bread just kind of goes, <laughs> love that. And then what we'll do is we'll take it and we'll put it right inside the hot oil. When we come back, I'm going to show you how it looks, but more importantly, how it tastes. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. Now, our pan Purdue. Let's see if we can turn this around a little bit now. Oh yeah, that's looking good, man. I don't mind telling you. Now, while that's kind of waiting, right there on that side. See, Doc thought I forgot him, <laughs> but I really didn't. I know he loves this eggplant pepper combo. Oh. Doc, why I'm doing this is because you got to taste this incredible olive oil that these gentlemen bought by. And I'm not even going to put like basil or any of that stuff. I just got the eggplant. I want Great. you to 
See the color of that oil oh, that I was man. telling you about? Just beautiful, huh? Great. Thanks. Hope you enjoy it, Doc. I know I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, we had like parsnip chips, we had sweet potato chips, we had zap chips, we had all kinds of chips. You can do with any kind of chips that you want. If you want that. You guys are open every night? Yes. Every day? Lunch or dinner? Yes. Till midnight. Till midnight? Yeah. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're just going to finish it. Generally, in New Orleans, with Pan Purdue, how it's absolutely finished, which you would not believe, it's actually finished with just a little bit of powdered sugar like this. Via Quadrano. This is for you. Thank you. I want to thank you all very much. Grazie. And uh, Grazie. it was wonderful visiting your place. Thank you. I'm Emeril Lagazzi. Thanks for joining me tonight, folks. See you tomorrow, everybody.